though. Thousands gathered in Louisville, Kentucky on Friday to celebrate the city's most celebrated figure, the legendary heavyweight boxing champion Muhammad Ali, who died this week. Let's start right there with CCTV correspondent Sean Calebs, who has been at the funeral service. Sean, tell us all about it. Quite a moving tribute. Indeed, quite a moving tribute that started in the early morning hours with the funeral procession that wound its way all through the landmarks that really characterized Muhammad Ali's life. And here at the service, he was eulogized as someone who was much more than the three-time heavyweight champion of the world. He was someone who devoted his life to fighting for human rights, the battle for equality and justice for all, even when it was wildly unpopular, especially here in the United States. Talking about the mid-1960s, after Muhammad Ali converted to Islam, Islam and said he would not be inducted into the U.S. Army after being drafted by the United States Army and he would not go uh, to Vietnam. He was stripped of his heavyweight title and he was banned for boxing for years. He faced losing everything, his livelihood uh, inside the ring, but he stayed true to his conviction. It was amazing to hear the litany of speakers, uh, uh, among them Ali's wife, Lonnie. Uh, Former President Bill Clinton at one point said that he wanted to personally thank Lonnie for making the champ's second half of his life even better than the first half. The boy from Grand Avenue in Louisville, Louisville Kentucky, grew in wisdom from his journeys. He discovered something new, that the world really wasn't black and white at all. It was filled with many shades of rich colors, languages, and religions. And as he moved with ease around the world, the rich and powerful were drawn to him, but he was drawn to the poor and the forgotten. He really was the champ of the everyman. Billy Crystal was among those also uh, delivering a eulogy today, and the comedian does a side-splitting routine of uh, Muhammad Ali. And he ended by saying that over the years, we learned from Muhammad Ali that he's someone who builds bridges to peace, not walls. Nathan? Sean Caleb, thanks so much. We'll have more of Billy Crystal later in the show because it was a, a great tribute. But joining me now in the studio is radio talk show host and civil rights activist Joe Madison. Also with us from San Francisco is Ishmael Reed. He's the author of The Complete Muhammad Ali. And also with me here in the studio is writer and activist Tariq Touré. Welcome all of you to the show. Uh, Sean drew it out nicely for us, this huge parade through uh, obviously Louisville, Kentucky, and obviously this very moving tribute. Joe, I've never seen that many faiths and that many uh, different types of people at a memorial service. Quite incredible. The world came out to basically pay tribute to Muhammad Ali. Well, and, and the answer is absolutely. And, and, and I think because, again, this is a man like any individual that I've known in sports and probably politics or any other mm -hmm. life th that, you know, traveled the world. He, he saw it from a, a prism that most of us don't get a chance to see. But more than anything, what you saw was something that I'm so glad we're seeing now in light of what's happening politically in this country and, quite honestly, globally. Uh, I mean, here we live in a time where we're arguing about whether or not you uh, get rid of Muslims, you, you build walls to stop neighbors from coming in. And this is a teachable moment for this country. I just hope people learn the lesson that Muhammad Ali left for us. Ishmael Reed, uh, I want to bring you in here. You're the author of The Complete Muhammad Ali, and you really trace so much of his life that other books haven't. Why do you think so many people turned out and said what they had to say at his memorial service? What was it about Ali? Well, I think he's been successfully, successfully uh, mainstreamed which is what happened to Malcolm X mm. and uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, there's a whole backstory that's not being mentioned. And I was disappointed that none of the elders who brought Muhammad Ali into the Nation of Islam, where he received his education, a kind of education that was missing in his school education, none of those people were there to speak. They had Orrin Hatch, one of the most right-wing of uh, senators, a man who's obstructed everything that uh, the president has, uh, has proposed. So and then you had Michael Lerner on the left, who, who uh, used the opportunity to make a long political speech. So both the left, the right, and the center 
are claiming this man. I'm going to follow up with you there because you raised a point that I was going to bring up um, a bit later in the show, but I'm glad you brought it up, is that in this legacy of Muhammad Ali, you're saying that some things are being forgotten. And uh, I want to read you a quote. Um, People should cherish the memory of Ali, not, uh, uh, as you've just described, as being whitewashed, but a warrior, a gleaming symbol of defiance against an unjust social order when he was young. Is that something you agree with, Ishmael? He was following the precedent of Elijah Muhammad, whose name wasn't even mentioned mm. uh, during this ceremony. Elijah Muhammad was uh, sort of like a father figure and a mentor, and Mo uh, Elijah Muhammad refused to fight in World War II, mm. which was a good war, considered a good war, because he refused to fight the Asiatic black man. Mm. And Muhammad Ali was following this precedent. As a matter of fact, the man who introduced Muhammad Ali into the Nation of Islam, uh, Abdul Rahman Muhammad, uh, probably known as Sam X, uh, cited Elijah Muhammad's uh, jail term and his refusal mm. to fight in World War II. I want to bring in uh, Tariq here. Uh, do you think um, a lot of that has been sort of looked over in the last week or so since we've been remembering Muhammad Ali? Uh, actually, how he went against mainstream society and it cost him so dear. You know, three years of his career, mm -hmm. uh, um, rejection by uh, a lot of the establishment. I think um, definitely I agree with Brother Reed. Uh, my father, you know, we, we, we are Sunni Muslims now. My father mm -hmm. and my mother, they both came through the Nation of Islam. And they make a, a point to always make sure that we know that it was the teachings of people in the Nation of Islam that brought them to Sunni Islam. And you don't want to um, compartmentalize that. And I think the fact that they didn't have anybody representing that, um, you know, it, it's, mis it's unfortunate. I think his legacy is definitely... Uh, being washed the same way uh, um, MLK uh, ends up being soft and fluffy. But when you look at the, the last 10 years of mm. MLK's life, you see he started to become, become very radical about his politics. Right. And Muhammad Ali, he, he, you know, he exuded that type of uh, political Well, radicalism. years before James Brown said, I'm black and I'm proud, or, well, or you I, know, I, I, we had I, Ali yeah, as but a... I mean, Marcus Garvey said that before James Brown said that. Absolutely. You know, right. the, the, Absolutely. The, yeah, the, look, this, and, and I think this is why we do shows like this. This is why I you agree. have Ishmael. Mm -hmm. This is why we talk about this because it, because we it is easy to whitewash those that have died. Mm -hmm. I mean, we it's done all the time. Everybody has said that. Mm -hmm. The thing that we have to keep in mind: this few, this memorial was put together by the family mm -hmm. and Muhammad Ali mm -hmm. before he died, according to the report. So I don't know what was going on inside that household mm -hmm. or that, that family. Mm -hmm. I don't care what was going on inside that household or family. This is why we're here, because there are backstories, mm -hmm. and it has to be told. This can, we can't stop with this memorial service. There are too many lessons to be learned and there are many, many people who can tell the, can tell the story. That what, you, what we saw today was a moment. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you've got to re realize that tomorrow we'll be off on something else. There'll be another great man or woman that will pass away. I mean, I saw the same thing with Rosa Parks. Right. You know, and, 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 and you know, n no one told the backstory. So thank goodness we're doing that today. Can we just listen to uh, former President Bill Clinton, what he had to say at today's memorial service? It's the gifts we all have that should be most honored today. Because he released them to the world. Never wasting a day that the rest of us could see anyway feeling sorry for himself that he had Parkinson's, knowing that more than three decades of his life would be circumscribed in ways that would be chilling to the naked eye. But with a free spirit, it made his life bigger, not smaller, because other people, all of us, unlettered, unschooled, in the unleashing said, well, would you look at that? Former President Bill Clinton there. Ishmael Reid, I want you to pick up on something um, uh, the former president said about not wasting a day. It seemed from reading your works and others that, that Muhammad Ali, uh, even as a young man, was a man in a hurry. 
uh, and wanted to become the champ very quickly and then do something else with his life. Is that something that, that, that Bill Clinton was alluding to, do you think? Well, um, I was the first to call uh, President Clinton a black president, <laughs> not because he imitated a black lifestyle, but because I heard people in the United States, black people, and even in Hawaii, uh, which is part of the United States, yep. uh, referred to him as black and having black, a black style. He used this black style to betray black people. We're, we, are, we, we need a couple more generations to recover from the war on drugs, right. which was specifically aimed at black people. That, Even that's, one of Nixon's aides. It's, one it's of Nixon's Mel, aides I, said so. I yeah. understand your point, but we are doing a show not on the war on drugs now, on the legacy of Muhammad Ali. So could you uh, uh, address, was he a man in a hurry? Was, was, was he someone who wanted to achieve um, a whole lifespan very, very quickly? Well, I, th I think it's important to know that because of Bill Clinton's policies, Blacks have lost, lost half their assets. I just right, so you were saying in. he is being hypocritical now, there. Well, now, uh, Muhammad Ali was, had the gift of gab. When I interviewed people in Louisville who knew him when he was growing up, they said the kid could always spout and express himself. I talked to his brother, Rachman, who said he got uh, some of his antics from Gorgeous George, who was right. a wrestler, a very famous mm -hmm. wrestler, who boasted who played the heavy in order to get the gate or sweeten the gate and get more had money, these yeah. kind of flamboyant gestures. Yes. So I saw Muhammad Ali fight Doug Jones in 1963 in Madison, Madison Square Garden. He lost the fight. When the decision was announced, the, the crowd booed. Jack Newfield said most of the uh, people who watched it and the fans and the sports writers said he lost the fight. But because he was telegenic, he was able to fight Sonny, listen, in the next fight. Uh, to, I want to bring you in here because um, Muhammad Ali uh, was obviously great in the ring, uh, but it seemed his education seemed to happen, a lot of it, after he refused to take the Vietnam draft and also with the Nation of Islam um, before as well. What, why do you think that happened then in his life? Well, uh, number one, you know, in the Nation of Islam, their, their you know, main tenet is knowledge of self. Mm. And I think he be began to become so much more aware of the history of uh, the black man in America and just the black plight in America and all the nuances that came along with it. And I think with that, that kind of, you know, became the spine of his radical stances because he, was, he would be able to point back to, point back to instances in history where uh, black people have been maligned and abused by America and by the state. And I think that education really propelled him into being able to say the things that he went on to say, being against the war, uh, fighting for indigenous peoples, um, and just really being, uh, like he says, the everyday man's man uh, for the rest of his life. Um, I want to get more into his language, but here's a master of language at his memorial uh, ceremony, and that was the comedian Billy Crystal. Let's take a listen. One time he asked me if I would like to run with him one morning, do world work with him. I said, well, that'd be amazing. Where do you run? He said, well, I run at this country club. And I run on a golf course early in the morning. It's very private. Nobody bothers me. We'll have a great time. And I said, champ, I can't run there. The, the club has a reputation for being restricted. Well, it's restricted me. They don't allow Jews there. They don't have any Jewish members. He was incensed. I'm a black Muslim, and they let me run there. <laughs> Little brother, I'm never going to run there again. And he didn't. 